Hi guys, it's Steffi from The Novelty Corner and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with another Books Beside My Bed video. For those of you who are new here, I film one of these videos every week and I recap the last week's worth of reading. If you are very familiar with these videos, welcome back. I'm glad that you're here and I'm going to jump straight into what's been happening in the last week in terms of reading. So this is my reading week from the 17th to the 23rd of March 2019. I read four books this week. I've also dabbled in about three other books which I'll talk about in a second. I have read a total of 1,572 pages and my yearly reading total is up to 73 books. I am currently reading Middle Game by Shauna Maguire which is one of her new books and I've got a NetGalley review copy for it on my Kindle. I did start this on Thursday. I'm still reading it on Sunday and it's good, but it's really, really slow. It's giving me real vicious by the Suave vibes. And I try to describe the book, except I don't really know what's going on at the moment. And it's taken me a long time to get to about 37%. So I have to figure out what's going on before I can even talk about the book, but it's well written and it's giving me all the vibes of books that I like. It's just really slow. So hopefully it will pick up the pace very, very quickly so that I can continue it because I really want to finish it. In potentially less interesting bookish news, I have started reading Strategies That Work by Stephanie Harvey and Anne Goodvis, Goodvis, which is a teaching resource book all about comprehension and also a literature companion for teachers by Lorraine MacDonald, which was published by Peter. This one I am really liking, but I think I'll stop and I'm going to purchase my own copy of it. This is a school copy because I want to write and annotate all over it. This one, I just want to sit down and actually spend some time and go through. I've started tabbing things up, but I've sort of started in a really weird place. I'm going to go back and I'm going to reread sort of the beginning of the book. So I have a better understanding of it. And now into the rest of the books, I'm going to start with my young adult book first and then move into the middle grade books because I did read three middle grade books this week, which makes me happy because it's still middle grade March. I have one more week to go. I I'm going to try and power through as many more middle grade books as I can before the week is up. But the first book I read this week was Caraval by Stephanie Garber. This is a young adult fantasy book. It was published in 2017 by Hodder and Stratton and I gave it five out of five stars. Now I know everyone has mixed opinions on Caraval. I personally really enjoyed it. It's a really, really quick read. The main character, uh, Scarlet, in this book is 17 or 18, I'm pretty sure. And she and her sister live with an abusive father and she has always dreamed of going to this mysterious caraval led by the Grandmaster Legend. And ever since she was a child, she's written letters to Legend because her home life is so terrible and she just wants to go to caraval and escape her life and experience it once. And then all of a sudden, right before she's about to be married off to a man she's never met, she receives a letter inviting her and her sister to caraval to participate in that year's festivities. And once they get there, Scarlet quickly realizes that not everything is quite as it seems at Carabao. I like it, it's easy, it's fun, it's quick, and it was just a perfect way to get back into reading at the start of this week. This was a reread for me for March, so I'm glad that I did manage to pick it up this week. Then I read York Book One, The Shadow Cipher by Laura Ruby, which is a middle grade book, and I'm sorry about the glare because this is a very shiny cover. It was published in 2017 by Walden Pond Press, and I gave it four out of five stars. I've forgotten the age of the main characters, but we follow three characters in this book, Tess, Theo, and Jamie. Tess and Theo are brother and sister, and they live in New York in a very old, very famous building that was built by the famous Morning Star twins who built up Old York with their wonderful creations. In this case, the this is sort of like an alternate history, alternate earth version of New York, and it is a bit steampunky and the Morning Star twins back in the late 1700s were responsible for designing a lot of what was then York and they were visionaries and created these most amazing machinery and things that still exist in the present day when this story takes place. Tess and Theo live in this building and then they find out that they're all being evicted from the building because the building is going to be torn down and rebuilt with a more modern take by a rather unscrupulous fellow. As such, they then decide to tackle the York Cipher, which was something left by the Morning Star twins after their disappearance. Theo and Tess team up with Jamie, who is another boy who lives in the building. They begin to follow the clues. This would be a really great book for anyone who sort of likes that alternate history. It's a bit magical realism, bit sci-fi, steampunk sort of book. And there's a lot of clues that you have to follow and a lot of wordplay. 
and that was a lot of fun. It did take a little while to get into it. It is not a small book. It does take a while, but I am very interested in following up this book and finding out what happens next. It was just very atmospheric and very fun. Then I read The Whispering Skull, which is book two in the Lockwood & Co series by Jonathan Stroud. This was published in 2014 by Corgi and I gave it five out of five stars. I love this series. It is middle grade horror. The main characters in this book are Lockwood, George and our narrator Lucy. We're never quite given the ages of these characters so they could be anywhere from about 10 to 18 years old. I think it's been quite deliberate to keep the ages of these characters unknown because in this world, once you reach a certain age, you can no longer sense or hear or see the ghosts that they're appearing because this is a world where ghosts suddenly started reappearing about 50 years ago or so and while adults can sort of sense them children are the only ones who can see hear touch or banish them which has caused the rise of ghost hunting agencies led by adults but but with child employees who are actually those who go out and hunt the ghosts. Lockwood & Co is a little bit different. It is a ghost hunting organization, but it is headed by Lockwood, who is probably in his early teens, maybe. And he, George and Lucy are this little band of kids who have their own agency, their own business, and they go out every night hunting ghosts. This one takes place in a cemetery and it is creepy and delightful. And Lucy is a totally awesome character. And oh my God, there was a reveal at the end that I'm just it was a cliffhanger and I want to know what's going to happen next. So I'll hopefully pick up book three this week. And the last book that I read this week was Bob by Wendy Mass and Rebecca Stead. This book was actually one that I purchased for the school and I stole it and brought it home and read it because this was published in 2018 by Text Publishing and I gave it four out of five stars. It is set in Australia, but I think both authors are American from what I can gather but it does have a real Australian feel to it. The main character Livy is 10 and a half years old as she tells us at the start of the story and she is visiting her grandmother in Australia. She herself lives in Massachusetts in the US and she hasn't been back to Australia in five years and she's completely forgotten the majority of things about her visit to Australia last time until she opens her bedroom door in her grandmother's house and finds a zombie chicken standing in her cupboard and his name is Bob. And then she begins to remember the things that happened the last time that she was here and trying to unravel the mystery of Bob. Bob himself doesn't exactly know who he is or why he is there. And it is the story of the two of them trying to find out those mysteries. And it was just delightful and fun. It has a real Australian, country Australian feel to it, particularly with the discussion around the drought and I just, I adored it. It was a lot of fun. So those are all the books that I read this week. In the comments below, let me know if you have read any of these books or if you are planning to. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're having a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.